next to the trainer, you're right next to the jockey. I really felt they were the first organization that treated me as an individual, not as an investor. We've been in another racing partnership. You didn't even know who your other partners were. Parting Glass is like one big happy family. Join Saratoga's original racing partnership. Visit us online at partingglassracing.com. This is the OTB Communications Network. Now, Track Facts with Tom Amello and Nick Kling. Well, good morning, racing fans, and welcome to Track Facts on this glorious, glorious Sunday morning. And uh, I'm sitting here right now alongside of Nick Kling, handicapper for the record, and Capital OTB President John Signer. He's in for the hour. We told you about that. He's here to uh, talk about uh, all sorts of information for you about Capital Off Track and take your questions a little later on in the program. Uh, we're also going to be joined uh, momentarily by handicapper Nick Tamaro. Uh, we're going to introduce him to you. Uh, also, we want to remind you that uh, our good friends at Parting Glass Racing are sponsoring this program as well as others on the network, and we're grateful for that. And you can contact uh, Tom Gallo and his management team at Parting Glass Racing. Dot com. John, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks. Uh, nice to see you. And yeah. it looks like uh, every, every looks, six months, I think. Right? Well, and, and it looks like you. <laughs> Whether you, you guys some, want it or not. <laughs> well, it looks like you. You've been in the sun, uh, <clears throat> while some of us up here in the Northeast have been uh, uh, in, in foul weather. And. Uh, so uh, welcome back. You look well, and Thanks. I know you've got a lot to, uh, to talk about. So. As you said, I took a freshening, so <laughs> I'm, I'm back and ready for uh, the go. Saratoga meet. Uh, I just want to say one thing. Yeah. Uh, yesterday we had our, our fourth annual uh, Handicapping Expo at the Teletheater. It was uh, uh, simulcast over the web. And uh, we had a great turnout at the Teletheater. Our presenters, uh, Jake and Phil from Racing Flow, uh, Tom Gallo and uh, from Parting Glass Racing, and uh, Dan Illman from uh, DRF Press were terrific. They provided an awful lot of information uh, to our, uh, our audience. And uh, we want to thank you and the, uh, the network and the, um, uh, the corporation for supporting that. It, yeah. It's a good thing. It, absolutely. And I think it's probably, what, third or fourth it's year fourth we've done year it? We've yeah, done it. It's, it's great stuff. Uh, I know you put a lot of time into it, Tom. I, we appreciate that. It doesn't happen unless, you know, uh, people take. Uh, take the bull by the horns mm -hmm. and make it happen. I know you and Gene and others put a lot of time into it. And, you know, we try to do a lot of things for, for the patrons and the fans. Uh, and it sounds, you know, we had 40 or 50 people, and that's, that's a nice response. Uh, and we'll continue to do those things because uh, we think it's the right thing. And, and if we can educate people and help them uh, gain some knowledge on how to win, not just how to bet, but how to win, uh, then it's good for everybody. Well, Dan, Dan Illman gave out all sorts of good information about uh, two-year-olds and trainers to watch and, and some trip information. The guys from Racing Flow, uh, they have extended a uh, four-week trial offer that will last throughout the uh, Saratoga meeting to everyone who is in attendance. And they extended that, John, to uh, our, uh, our live uh, web audience. And okay. they've asked that we extend that today. Good. So uh, I'm going to tell you right now that uh, if you're interested, uh, you email jake at uh, racingflow.com. Uh, tell them you're watching Track Facts and you want a trial subscription, and uh, they'll get you hooked up for the Saratoga meet. Okay, John, the things you're going to talk about yeah, Nick tomorrow. Yeah, I'll, I'll touch on a couple things, and so we can go to Nick, and then we can come back. You know, when we come back, I'll talk about some other stuff. But I just wanted to remind people of some of the promotions we're doing. Uh, you know, we did this last year, the Bet 50, Get 50. I know you guys mm -hmm. have mentioned it as well. Uh, we think it's a, a, a very nice promotion. Uh, and what we hope is that patrons out there, you know, tell their friends who don't have a, a you know, a phone, a bet, or internet account, uh, you know, and have them sign up. It's a, it's a, it's a win-win. You know, you bet 50, and as soon as you, you bet the $50, we deposit $50 in your account. Helps us generate a little excitement for the Saratoga meet and get people, uh, you know, involved in the game who may be more casual fans. Um, and uh, we just think it's a really nice promotion. So, you know, and a lot of it, 
comes from the patrons out there. They spread the word. You know, we tell them, and then they'll, you know, they'll tell their friends and say, hey, why don't you go sign up? So uh, we've got a nice response so far. Last year we did it, and we had you know, a, a very nice response where we uh, increased the number of account holders, and, and that's a good thing. Uh, another thing, another promotion that we're running is uh, the, the Winter Circle, Saratoga, and, and thanks guys down in the uh, control room for putting that up. <laughs> it's not like I give you a heads up, so they're very good down there. Um, Saratoga, the Winter Circle, we're doing a, uh, a Saratoga meet where it's $100 to be a member. Um, if, you're a, you know, if you're a fan of racing and if you're a fan of uh, Saratoga, which everybody is, even the, you know, the casual fan, uh, this is a, a no-brainer. You sign up. We have a lot of promotions. And, you know, some people can't get to the track every day um, or even 20 days or even 15 days. But, you know, maybe on their lunch hour, they want to come over, get a racing form, bet a couple races, bet some, uh, you know, pick, pick threes, pick fours. Uh, and uh, this is a perfect opportunity for the for the, the real fan should you know the real horse fa racing fan should be a member. May, may I read a couple sure, of the bulleted sure. parks? Yep. Here are some of the bulleted parks for this. And, and by the way, I am a member. Uh, first of all, you get a two for one membership, your, your, which includes your spouse. Well, my wife comes and she wins. Uh, and you get uh, uh, comfortable seating and the big screens. Uh, plus, you get free daily racing for it. Done. Uh, racing forms for for 36 days. That's yeah, a bargain that's right, right there. Yep. Uh, and there are member only promotions plus uh, food. It's it's an access to uh, the PC and the printer there. Absolutely, so we have a little it, business a center deal. there, and, and yeah, it's it's a total win win. If you're if you're a, a fan of racing, you should absolutely be a a, a member for the entire year. Um, and if you're a casual fan, this is a perfect time where you know maybe you work in Albany and you don't get up to the track as often as you want to. Uh, but you want to be in a, a nice, comfortable, uh, you know, uh, wagering environment. And a parking area. And a free, you know, <laughs> f yeah, a private entrance, uh, you know, obviously free parking, air conditioning. So we would just, you know, and, and if you go by the teletheater before the Saratoga meet, just stop up. Uh, Danielle's up there. Jack Colt is there. Go up and look at it. Take, you know, and uh, we try to have people up there catering to, uh, to the betters, as we do down, you know, down in the main teletheater area as well. But um, you know the racing board gave us approval for this. We have somewhere between 50 and 60 members, and it's really been a nice um, venue, as you know. You're a member, mm -hmm. Tom, and it's 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 uh, so it's it's worked out really well for us, and we want to continue to grow it and and you know get that information to the fans. Why don't you introduce Nick uh, tomorrow, and then we'll uh, segue to him. I will. I will. Uh, you know, Nick um, Nick tomorrow. It's funny. I was on a. I went to a blog. Now, last year, two years, probably two years ago, it was called Race Day New York or right. something. And I don't even know if it still exists, but um, Nick was one of the main bloggers there, if you will. And there were a lot of really good guys, good handicappers there. There are also some kooks, but <laughs> that's beside the point. But notwithstanding that, um, Nick also did some work for the Racing Dispatch. Right. And uh, it's funny because I went there just by happenstance, uh, and just he had a pic du jour. And I think he, he hit his first five in a row, and I think the last one he hit was a, you know, a pick of the day, $40 horse. I said, you know what? i got to give this guy a shot with capital OTB. I mean, that, that's pretty good. And obviously it leveled off, and, you know, he did well. No, and, and, really? And, yeah, he didn't hit 100% of, of, uh, of his selection. But the bottom line is, and he's also a very good writer. He's got good opinions, and he can articulate his opinions in his analysis, which is what I really like. Mm -hmm. I, you know, if you, it's one thing to say I like one, two, three, but it's another to really give specifics and detail why you, you like that horse. And I think Nick does a good job. He's a good writer. He also has a blog on our website. Right. I apologize for holding my earpiece. I'm going to fix it when you go to Nick. Okay. Um, but, and lo and behold, I sent Nick an email, and uh, he was more than willing to come aboard. And he's been with us a couple of years. He does a very good job. He also does our pick four promotion mm -hmm. sometimes. So we're very happy with him, and uh, he does a good job. So take Nick it away. Nick Tamara, are you there? I am here. Good morning. Well, Nick, good morning to you. Listen, we've actually got your live picture here. Uh, welcome to the program. Uh, we're delighted to have you here. That's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good opening uh, uh, from the, the, the chief mukti muck here at uh, Capitol Off Track, and uh, congratulations. Uh, Nick, why don't you just tell our audience a little, a little bit about yourself, how you got in the game, uh, and uh, your evolution in the game. Go ahead. Your philosophy as well. Well, thank you, and thank you for the, uh, the introduction, John. I feel like I have a lot to live up to here in my uh, first offering to the public on track facts, but thanks again for having me this morning. 
Um, I basically learned the game at my father's knee. He was a regular in the 70s at, uh, at Belmont and Aqueduct. I was there for Secretary at Belmont, there for Seattle Slews, and it really only took that, that first trip to the track to get hooked. Um, and, and for me, the exercise in trying to find a winner and going through the information and then having that opinion but also being able to articulate it exactly like, uh, like John said was something that I, that I really liked. And I was a, a liberal arts kind of guy in college, so writing came to me easily. And uh, I just love, love reading the, the racing form every day, love handicapping, and, and definitely love sharing my opinion with the public, especially when it's good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you this. Uh, uh, if, I'm, if I'm reading, you know, I've always said this. Uh, if you're going to follow any handicapper, be it Nick Kling, uh, Nick Tamara, anybody else, uh, yeah, you read the narrative, uh, but there are also, for me, there's also, also either a key voice or a key word that I'm kind of looking for. Um, you know, I wanted to ask Paul Corman, you know, uh, if you, he, when he was writing trips, wh what trip note is more important to me or to you? And he, his answer was with a, uh, with a wry smile, rated restrain late bid. That, that, was, that was something that was important to him. So if I'm reading, or if uh, uh, one of our customers is reading what you've uh, written, um, what are they looking for? When do we know you're on this horse? Uh, what are they looking for with one particular horse? That well, I'm... in terms of, terms of your riding style, that, that would uh, uh, illuminate your philosophy. Uh, well, you know, I, that's a good question. Uh, I, I approach it a few different ways. I know that I have done a bit better in the last couple of years integrating some trip handicapping into my analysis. So there will be some occasions where I'm very specific about, you know, a trip that maybe some people might miss. It's very easy to catch that, you know, steady boxed-in trip on the inside and, and let loose late to make a furious finish uh, because 90% of the public saw that, and they're going to wait for that horse to be bet back. But it's maybe that stumbled badly start, made a wide move, uh, specifically on, on maybe the inner track. Uh, and so I will try and, and let that be known in my analysis uh, because that, that might be one of those, those sneaky hidden trips. So I would say that uh, I really would look for anything trip-related and then also form cycles, which uh, I, I you know, started to try and get into a little bit more. That's always something that's, that's difficult. And uh, if you can catch a pattern that a horse is in that mirrors a pattern they've had in the past that's been successful, I'll try and let that be known also. But I, I think that I, I try and, 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 uh, gar and you know, judge my opinions carefully and, and not go, you know, not be too firm, but not be too soft, because after all, they are, the people who are reading are looking for an opinion, and I, I don't want to waffle, but I will say plainly, oftentimes, that so-and-so is strictly the one to beat, mm -hmm. and on occasion, they end up being right. Okay. Uh, one, one other uh, question. Uh, if you're uh, remotely familiar with, uh, with uh, track facts or <clears throat> with, uh, with Nick Kling, uh, he often talks about uh, people who are slavish to uh, speed figures as being somewhat uh, uh, nitwittish. Uh, you're not a speed figure nitwit, are you there, um, uh, Nick? Uh, I will view them. Uh, I try and, and let them be just one aspect in the overall picture because I think that it is very easy to become figure-centric in, in this game, and that can be very problematic if you let it happen. You know, Nick, I like figure-centric. Much more than speed figure nitwit. Uh, I, 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 I think I, I, I like that. I, I really do. Uh, what tools? Are you, you talked about trips. Are you a form guy, formulator guy? Uh, uh, any particular form of speed or pace figures? Just uh, what's in the mix? Yeah, uh, uh, daily racing form and formulator. I think formulator really is probably the most innovative tool that's ever been made available in this game. And you know the. Folks at DRF just seem to, seem, to, seem to keep doing better and better with getting information out there to the public. Uh, and, I, and I know that even comparing it to, and you guys have been reading the racing form longer than me. Uh, as Wait a minute. I, I Are you that. saying you're <laughs> old? <laughs> but, but, you know, the evolution and just the information available in the form has been incredible. And then you add a, a, a tool like Formulator in. I do find myself sometimes looking up the most mundane statistics, like so-and-so second off a 45 to 180-day layoff with this jockey on this circuit while changing surfaces <laughs> in the last 90 days. So, you know, occasionally I, you can take it too far, but I do like to use those two as a baseline. And I will occasionally sprinkle in the duragraph sheet if I can find uh, a horse that maybe is fitting into a pattern that uh, I like after looking at the form. And, you know, occasionally it'll, it'll take you to a, a reasonably priced horse. And sometimes I like, I, I like to leave it as maybe that last little tidbit that goes into the whole thing and mm -hmm. really puts you over the edge. Nick? Uh, Nick, uh, Nick Kling here. Uh, I, I guess my question would be, you know, since the simulcast handicapper, which I assume you are most of the time when you're looking at New York racing, 
uh, you know, it's a, it's a little bit tougher than it is when you can be on track because you don't have access to the paddock, uh, you don't have access to a lot of the live things. So what do you do as a television slash simulcast handicapper to try to, you know, uh, um, make up for the fact that you can't, you know, you, you, you get a little bit of a view of the horse, horses in the post parade, but, you know, not a lot. You get a, a occasional view of a horse in a paddock. You know, what do you do, if anything, to try and make up for uh, the fact that you can't be on track? Uh, yeah, that's a great question, and, and obviously a, a big hurdle if you are a simulcast handicapper. Uh, I try and keep as many notes on horses that are uh, frequent, you know, New York runners as I can, and try and keep certain notes on certain trainers' horses. Uh, I know that we run into, you know, some guys have horses that get very skittish uh, before a race, and, and whether it be in the winter at Aqueduct or in the summer at Saratoga. And so familiarizing yourself with those particular animals and sometimes those folks that, that train them uh, is usually a, a good thing. And, yeah, not having that element of being able to see someone that really is just, you know, an unbelievable specimen in the paddock or one on the flip side that uh, really is one you want to stay away from, it, 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 it's, it's, it's reason, yeah, it's definitely a, a factor to not have it. But I think if you're diligent and can really keep up with all of the, of the information involving some of those particular horses, then you can kind of stay on top of it. Well, you, you know, Nick, it, it's funny, uh, uh, racing in general and the New York Racing Association in particular have gotten a little bit better about that sort of a thing. But you would think that with 90% uh, of their handle coming off track, that uh, they would, you know, I don't necessarily uh, would say uh, we should cater to the off-track player, but you would think that they would do a lot better job of providing information, for example, on you know, track maintenance between races, uh, better shots of the paddock, information on horses that might have uh, you know, gotten hot or fractious in the security barn. Uh, you would think that those things would be high on their agenda of things to get done. Uh, yeah, you, I mean, you would think so. I guess that uh, I know, and I, I really have been applauding Naira for the last couple of months in the sense of the information that they are making available on a regular basis. Um, but certainly, I do think there's some track related things that perhaps could be enhanced. And uh, really, a meet like Saratoga is a great time to try. Sure. I will say that they did get information out yesterday about Lemon Cream Pie being a first time gelding. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was one of those horses who, if you knew that information, you thought, oh, you know, here's Jimmy Jerkins. Maybe I can ignore that two for 66 number on the turf in the last two years, but take this horse who's coming off a layoff, joining his barn, which is, has always been something he's been good with, right. and now is the first time gelding, and, and there was the $26 winner. But, you know, it seems like we have all of this information that's readily available, and it can sometimes end up being that, you know, did they seal the track between races, or have they upgraded the conditions, or, you know, uh, other information like that that we need to really uh, finish the whole picture. Uh, that's a great comment. Uh, Nick, uh, one last thing, and then we'll have you go. Uh, preparation for Saratoga. Uh, anything in particular that uh, that you've done to get ready? Uh, we got, uh, you know, we had a little more in the week. Yeah, I've been uh, combing through the charts from from uh, last year. Uh, you know, assembling some information. I keep all the charts myself and, and go through day by day, and have uh, been doing that, looking at guys that got off to good starts. And what I've done at, at the, in the Belmont meet. Is, uh, I have a spreadsheet where I keep all of the charts with all the other assorted information. And I've taken out the two-year-old races in particular because, first of all, we haven't really had very many. Right. Um, and, you know, trying to take a look at those and maybe see who uh, is going to go into some of the Saratoga races as a second-time starter. Because I, I found on occasion that if you have a race full of horses trained by Todd Fletcher, Kieran McLaughlin, uh, you know, really well-bred firsters, you can occasionally find that seven or eight-to-one second-time starter right. that maybe has some reason to, uh, to get on him in that situation. So I think there are various things that you can do to prepare. Um, I'm trying to mix it up uh, day by day as we get closer and, and get as much information together. Always good to get that uh, horses for courses list together as well because there are so many at Saratoga. But uh, I think my preparation is probably almost 50%, but we're only seven days or eight days away, so I better, uh, better jump on it. <laughs> okay, Nick. Nick, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Wish you continued success. Uh, and uh, as John said, uh, uh, your selections and uh, your blog are readily available on uh, the website at capitalotb.com. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, and I'll see everyone at uh, Saratoga opening day. I think I'm going on on the first Thursday, and I know we have a 
six four promotion every Saturday. So okay, great. Looking forward to a great Saratoga meet. Thanks for having me. Great. Well, take care. Man. Take care. All right, we're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, uh, we'll get more information from John about uh, Capital Off Track. And uh, Nick uh, already started the Saratoga promotion That's list. Right. Away. Good. We'll be right back. Back, ladies and gentlemen, Tom Amello, Nick Kling, and uh, Capital Off OTV President John Signer. Uh, we're the uh, want you to know that uh, John will be taking calls today, so we'll be going to phone calls uh, in about 10, 12 minutes or so, and, and we're up on the email uh, at viewer mail at capitalotv.com. So, John, let's uh, pick up where we left off. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick up a, a few more items that I want to mention, and then I'll, I'll, you know, at the end of the show, maybe touch on some others. Uh, as, as Nick was talking about, uh, information from the track, live information that fans can use. I mean, one, one of the things we are doing this Saratoga meet is we're, um, we're partnering with uh, an entity and creating a website called Saratoga Tout, saratogatout.com. Now, it's, I don't think it's up yet, but it will be up soon. And, and one of the things we're going to focus on is pro providing fans with instantaneous information uh, from the paddock, uh, from the racetrack, uh, you know, maybe after after the race, a horse to watch next time out, things of that nature, uh, selections. But what we want is to make it, you know, obviously we want you to come into CapitalOTB.com every day during Saratoga, but we also would like you to stop at, at this site and get some information off there. And, and we're going to be working with, uh, you know, uh, the technology of today, if you will, Twitter and, and that type of information where... Uh, you know, we can send out emails and text messages right away that say, you know, I kind of um, envision it to some extent what we did um, on TV when the wizard, right. remember the wizard was yep. walking up to the seven for a yep. long uh, yep. gate and saying, you know, well, the favorite looks a yep. little washed out and, you know, this horse is 10 to 1 and geez, he looks pretty good and c trying to give information before the race that you can decide to use or not. Um, that hopefully will help betters uh, win more. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's you know it's going to be our first year. It's in the infancy stage, but I think it's somewhat um, you know innovative. And uh, and if it works and we do it in a way that helps our betters, then uh, then hopefully next year it'll be even better. So uh, so I would just say you know right if you're at home, just write down SaratogaTout.com, and probably you know we'll we'll announce it when it comes out. But don't you know. And we'll have our link to our website on there, and mm -hmm. you can get to our internet platform from there as well. So just keep that in mind. But I wanted to follow up on and, what you and said. And that'll be the sort of thing that, uh, you know, as it evolves during the meet, John, I assume that you want feedback from, you know, Capital's customers. Sure. You know, it works well this way, or I wish you were doing this, and yeah. that sort of thing. You uh, want, you're, you're going to be looking for yeah, feedback. Yeah, I mean, they were going after, and, and the, the thought was to go after the more casual fan. Initially, they wanted to do, like, morning workouts and give mm -hmm. all morning workout information. I mean, oh, that's, yeah. that's it. Would you want to make me a clock? Exactly. <laughs> now, I, told, I said that's a little too much, and if you're going after the casual fan, let's be honest, they don't really care about morning workouts for the most part. But, you know, maybe it'll evolve into that, and, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, and, and if we get, you know, thoughts from, the patrons, as Nick said, on how to improve it and, and is it useful 
um, then we'll, we'll build on it from there. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I want to mention is this Friday, upcoming Friday, we're doing a, uh, we've talked about this for a while, and we want to, thank you guys, um, we wanted to promote Saratoga. You know, look, the economy's down, and people are not wagering what they have in the past, but we wanted to get a little excitement going into the meet and uh, promote Saratoga, as well as uh, we're going to donate some money to the admissions to uh, the d disabled, uh, permanently disabled jockey fund, which uh, in our view is a, you know, a tremendous charity. Um, we have, uh, we have chair the chairs of our event will be myself, also Mayor Jennings is gonna be a chair, and Charlie Hayward is mm -hmm. gonna be at the event and will be a chair of the event. Uh, and we asked uh, you know, a special guest, we asked Roddy Valeni to be a guest as a local horse owner to participate. Uh, Roddy basically told me, whatever you need me to do, I'll do. So I guess what I'm saying is there's a $5 donation at the door, uh, and all that money is going to go to charity. It's going to go to the Disabled Jockeys Fund. Uh, we're going to have a band from 5, uh, I think from 7 to 9, we're going to have the, the Blues House Rockers. So it's going to mm -hmm. be a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. We're going to have a tent outside in the uh, Teletheater parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it holds you know upwards of 200 people. So we're really looking to make this a nice pre-Saratoga event that um, raises money for, uh, for a good charity and also, uh, also get some excitement going forward for the Saratoga meet. Maybe get some people who've never been to the teletheater facility mm -hmm. to come to the party, maybe walk in and say, you know what, if I can't make it to the track, uh, next time I want to bet, I'll go over to the teletheater and make a bet. So, uh, so we're just looking to generate a little excitement. I hope you guys will show up. You're I'll more than there. welcome. I'll be there. Uh, everybody out in the audience, we'd love uh, for you to show up, and uh, we expect it to be a good time. We'll, we'll, there'll be some giveaways. Uh, very, uh, I think the food, I shouldn't even be saying this, but I think the food is free. And, the, uh -oh. uh, the, the, and they're going to have, uh, you know, soda, beer, and wine, which will be very, very reasonably priced. This is going to be, this is really just getting a bunch of people together to have a good time and get excited about the Saratoga meeting. John, John, you mentioned the economy and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, at the Naira press conference a few weeks ago, Charlie Hayward was talking about his expectations for this Saratoga meet. Do you go into the season with expectations, or do you... You know, does Capital's Saratoga business kind of rise and fall with what Naira does? Yeah, um, you know, we're doing, when you look at Capital OTB, and I have to, you know, give thanks to our patrons and our betters, we're doing better than any other entity in New York State, Capital OTB. Uh, everybody's down, mm -hmm. but we're down the least. Um, and I think a reason for that are the thing, you know, we, we try to, you know, respond to our patrons and our betters. We try to make, do innovative things. We have, obviously, we have our internet platform up now where you can get track prices. We have video streaming on our website. Uh, obviously, we don't have Naira on there, but you can get, you know, we have seven or eight tracks a day that you can, you can, you know, you can watch a lot of tracks on. You can almost have two different TV stations right. going mm -hmm. on. Channel 12 and go on the internet and watch whatever else, uh, other track you would like to watch. So, uh, you know, we're doing a lot of, uh, you know, we did a new tote board on our website. We're going to have uh, Will Pays for pick threes and fours and pick six on there very soon. Uh, so we're trying to make, we're trying to do a lot of positive things. But back to your question, Nick. Um, you know, I think we do, you know, if Naira, let's remember last year, the first three weeks of last Rain. year, it was rained right. out. Absolutely. You know, small fields. Right. Um, I was listening to somebody talk about the upcoming meet, and it may have been you guys last week. And... Uh, you were saying how, you know, a lot of the turf race, you're going to have huge fields in right. these turf races because they've all been waiting to run and they haven't been able to because right. of the rain uh, yeah. that's happened over the last month. So I expect for the first three weeks, our handle will at least maintain or I'd love it to go up. But, um, you know, the way the economy is, I've talked to other OTBs, what's happening a lot is that you're still getting the same number of bets but it's just a lower denomination. You know, people who may have bet twenty dollars a race are now betting ten. People mm -hmm. who may bet ten are now betting five. So, um, uh, you know, we we have started the internet, um, as you know, internet platform. We last year we did about eight million on the internet. I think this year we're going to do fifteen. Um, so we've really been able to tap into that um, aspect of it. But uh, you know, we're down. I think we're down about eight percent. Uh, the other OTBs are down between, you know, nine and a half and 13. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, Naira is probably down at least 10. Right? Yeah. Um, so we're, we're, and the national average is somewhere around 10. Mm -hmm. So I think we're doing better than everybody else, but 
you know, that, you know, we're still working as hard as we can to maintain that. And, you know, it's, it, it'd be nice to say we had an up Saratoga meet, but uh, it's hard to predict. And, and the way the economy is, is, is yeah, playing right. a significant role, no doubt well, about it. Well, John, I should mention that I, I don't know if you saw this or not, but uh, a few days ago, Paul Moran, a well-known turf writer, uh, many years sure, with Newsday, yeah, sure. you know, he's got a blog now, and, and he's moved, he's become an upstate New York I, I, oh, resident. Okay, I, I think he's, I think he's a Saratoga resident, but I know okay. it's upstate here somewhere. And he wrote on his blog, you know, and I'll, I'll capsulize it: uh, the difference upstate, capital O T B T V versus what's available to a horse player downstate, and. Here, the, here, the bottom line, from a player's standpoint, Capital OTB does in-home simulcasting far better than on Long Island or in New York City, uh, for that matter, and it, it amounts to nothing more than providing the product to the player. Simplicity is a wonderful concept. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, and, and we've, uh, and it's funny, if you think about when, you know, Mike and I first came in, geez, seven or eight years ago, they were doing live audio on the TV station. We changed all that. We mm -hmm. went to replays. Uh, yep, you know, right. Two minutes after the race, we put the replay up. And I think uh, that in and of itself has, has improved the Absolutely. station. We went to the Saratoga. You know, we worked with Charlie Hayward. Charlie uh, was generous enough. You know, we'd love to show the races live, but uh, we would give the live audio call during Saratoga. And we changed that, and we now do the replay. And, and I give Charlie Just, a lot of credit for right. allowing that. And so, um, so we, you know, we've improved, in my view, we've improved the station significantly as much as you can, you know. Um, we don't always do it perfect. You know, sometimes uh, we'll, you know, we'll, the audio won't be on or something will happen. But uh, for the most part, I think, you know, I think we do it best. And I think also if you, if you focus on Naira racing, uh, you know, TVG covers all the tracks equally. We right. cover Naira 75% of the time, uh, and during Saratoga, probably 85% of the time. So mm -hmm. if, you're a, if you follow the Naira circuit, there's no better station to watch than Capital OTB. And I, I give a lot of credit to the guys downstairs, That's the true. techs who yeah. you know, do the grunt work and are on the front lines, Jim Barber, who's the TV. Uh, but we've made a lot of changes, I think, to improve the station, and uh, I think the feedback's been good because our account wagering went from $30 million when we first got here to probably upwards to 40 million uh, now. So we've increased, while the branches are going down just through attrition, our, our mm -hmm. patrons, our, our demographic moving, passing on, unfortunately, our, uh, our account wagering has continued to grow. And I think that's a lot of the innovations that we've done. Let me, I think when we were uh, at the Naira conference, that the, while you were talking about the percentages of handle being down, casinos have been hit Absolutely. much harder uh, yep. and, and, and I think that that's an interesting phenomenon when, when you say, okay, our biggest competitors are, are casinos, if you will, or, or table gaming yeah. and that sort of thing. Yet, uh, in terms of uh, what's happening, the, the horse race customer has stayed with yeah, the Yeah, I mean, you know, when you think about it, if you're down 10%, but you compare it to other industries, the racing industry isn't really doing that badly. Um, sure, we'd love to be up and we'd love to be doing better, but uh, you know, as you said, Tom, if you compare it to the uh, casinos or other industries, I think we're pretty solid. And, and uh, you know, I think it shows the uh, uh, you know the fan, the interest of the fans, and the loyalty of the fans to continue wagering on on a great product. I mean, horse racing is is fantastic, and we're coming into the best part of the year uh, in ten days. I'm I'm going to say this before we go to commercial break, and then we'll take phone calls and emails. Uh, you know, we've said here before, we've been fortunate to know uh, and uh, have as a friend Mark Kramer, who, who, who said that, in his opinion, it's the responsibility of the venue that hosts um, its customer, if you will, to help the customer beat the out-of-state customer or the, the customer from the simulcast customer. Mm -hmm. And, and he had said that one of the things to do is to, is to give them as much information that they can decide to use or not use. And, and I think that uh, what you're presenting here is Capital's effort to meet Mark Kramer's suggestion of how to make, how to make it in the game. Yeah, the, more, you know, the better educated the fans are and the betters are, the, the more likely they're going to win and churn and, and right. keep interest in the game, and that's what we want. Right, we're going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, uh, we'll have there the phone numbers, 370-1315, 1-888-253-8562, viewer mail at capitalotv.com. We've had a couple of emails. 
Uh, Top Turf Teddy sent in a couple of picks, so we'll give you those. Uh, and uh, we'll be back, uh, John Signer, for your questions. Stay with us. Back, ladies and gentlemen, Tom Amello, Nick Kling, Capital OT President uh, John Signer. We've got a caller on the line. We're going to go to that in a second. Uh, a couple of open lines, and uh, we're ready for emails. Just want to know, know that uh, Top Turf Teddy is back in town, and in today's seventh, uh, he likes the six, Minia. And in the ninth race, uh, the two horse, uh, Hello Broadway. I think that's Barkley Tag, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, he thinks he might have a chance to wire. So uh, Top Turf Teddy's picking uh, the sixth. In the seventh race and the two in the ninth race, we'll see what happens. Let's go to uh, the phone lines. Going to start off this morning with our good friend Bob in Saratoga. Bob, good morning. Good morning. It looks like the three wise men <laughs> at the table there. Yeah, Mo, Larry, and uh, what's, his, what's the other one? Mo, Larry, Curly and Curly Shamp or Joe. All we, all we <laughs> need now, Bob, is a star to follow. So <laughs> okay. You... I got a couple of things, though. Two good things and one thing that I'm a little negative on. Mm -hmm. Um First of all, uh, compliments to the customer service department, uh, um, Mrs. Gintner and uh, the ladies that work down there and the one fellow down there. They, I, I really think they do a terrific job. I've never called there and not got an answer to my question. Yes, yeah, Sue is Sue Ginter is, is tremendous. And I know, she, you know, she takes call. Uh, well, I won't even say it. she takes calls on weekends from customers, but you know, if uh, sometimes she does, she's very dedicated and she's got a great personality for customer service. So uh, I, right. I couldn't agree more with you, Bob. She's okay. great. Now, uh, one other, one other thing which is kind of a testy issue is the announcers on this on the uh, from the studio. Uh, one fellow in particular, and today I won't mention his name, he's been with you for about 15 or 20 years, and he still doesn't know how to pronounce names, know who jockeys are or anything like that. I found, just for me, that at the times I've tuned in and there's been no studio announcer, the program has been far more palatable to me. It's more enjoyable. Uh, if you need to get a race result, just call up the race result line. Right. Uh, you know, it, it just, I, I, I think in today's economy and everything like that, it's a, it's, a, it's a no value thing for you to spend your money on, and especially when at least half the time they don't get it right. <clears throat> well, we, we, you know, um, we, are, we always are looking to improve the corporation, make it more efficient, make it better for the customers, and we look at everything from announcers to you know, branches to yeah. uh, to what we do in in the administration. So I can I can promise you that we're looking at everything. Um, you know, I think they work hard and they they do their best. And uh, and uh, but we we are you know we are looking at everything you know on a constant basis. So uh, we were told at, a, at the first of the year that they were going to eliminate the announcers. Uh, well, I don't want to get into personnel issues, but we're right. you know whether. You know, I think they do the job that they're uh, 
asked to do and have been doing. Uh, uh, you know, we are, you know, in the current technology, uh, you can get information off the website and internet and things like that. Is it necessary to, right. you know, it's something that we look at. And, uh, and uh, I can't make any, any uh, promises one way or the other, but uh, I can just tell you that we, you know, it's something that we are looking at along with a lot of other issues. Uh, right, well, I, I appreciate that. And also, again, just to clarify, that, uh, for that negative thing, it's, it's, it's okay, but the positives of the customer service department uh, just far outweigh my gripe with the announcers. Good. Well, okay. we appreciate that, and uh, and we appreciate all the input, whether it be good or bad. We want to, you know, we, we do the best we can, but we always want to get better. So, okay. uh, Bob, thank you, John. before you go, Bob, one quick question. I, yep. I need at least one or two trainers with hot two-year-olds that uh, training in Saratoga. Let's go. Come on. You're not, I'm not letting you get away here that easy. Frank Alexander. Yeah. And uh, Rusty Arnold has got two two that he's bringing up. Okay, that, they're, that, they're good. That that's all I want to know. Thank you very much, Bob. Always good to talk to you. Bye bye. Yep. Okay. Gonna, gonna go next to uh, Mark and Fonda. Mark, good morning. Haven't Mark. heard from you for a while. Good morning, guys. Out was away last week and uh, just getting ready for Saratoga because it's fast approaching. Uh, my question is on, on branches. I know John recently you closed the the Fort Plain branch on western yeah. Montgomery County. And I was just curious whether you're going to find something up that way, uh, somewhere between, you know, Amsterdam and, and Herkimer to reopen. Now, I know you reopened the Herkimer branch, and yeah. I was just wondering if you're going to find something up there for the locals because there was a pretty dedicated bunch up there sure. the past 15 years. Yeah, uh, we, you know, we were looking, uh, I think, Canada Jahari, we were looking right. possibly for an easy bet in those areas. And and to be honest, Mark, we looked at uh, across the street, There's a, there was a bar restaurant across the street from, yep. from nope. Fort Plain. And we looked there, and for some reason it didn't work out. So right. uh, we thought that was the best location. So yet, uh, I guess the answer is yes, we are looking, and... Uh, and hopefully we'll find something. Uh, right. You know, part of, as you know, uh, the branch, uh, some branches aren't profitable, and, right. and it's something we have to deal with, and we know that there are a lot of loyal customers out there who frequent the branches, <laughs> whether, you know, they don't, uh, whether the profitability or not, and uh, we exactly. understand that, and, uh, but we are looking, we, we probably will not do another, put, you know, put another branch in, but we are looking at, a, at easy bet locations up there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing is, I mean, I, I understand, because I'm, I'm basically an internet guy anyway, yep. so I'll wager on the internet, well, every time, especially, you know, this time of year. Right. But uh, there's a lot of the older guys and stuff, and, and I understand that's the direction you're going into. But I was just curious, hopefully, that maybe you get an easy bet up there, and that would, you know. If you, have, if you have any sites up there, any <laughs> suggestions? Well, uh, no, I, in fact, I had talked to okay. uh, by Lena okay, about, sure. about, yep, yep. about yep. that other, other place you made mention okay. of. Okay. And I know you have the Bowen Alley and Kanja Harry. I know the tough thing is finding places that are going to be open noon hour. Right. Right. And right. There's, there's some, but a lot of places don't. Now, I, I, I heard the Bowen Alley is open year-round down here, but I also heard they closed July and August. So that yeah, doesn't that sound good. That, would, that wouldn't work, yeah. That, that, that would be <laughs> and a, we've that. had other sites where, the, just as you said, uh, it, it looked like a great location, and then they were opening up at you know four o'clock and wondering right. why they weren't doing any handles. So that's, that's uh, I, it do. doesn't work. Yeah. Yep. No, I've been trying. I've been trying to think of some other places, but it's kind of tough because a lot of those. Yeah. Places, because that's the way it is. There's not a whole lot up this way anymore. Right. <laughs> but we're we're looking, and hopefully we'll find a spot. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Talk uh, to you guys later. Thanks, before, Mark. Before we take a next call, we had an uh, internet uh, question. Larry wants to know, or wants you to explain, John, why uh, we don't have the uh, Nyrus feed on uh, internet. Uh, because now we won't allow it. Well, that's, I mean, that's yeah. plain and simple. It's, uh, it's, it's an iris. It's, yeah, it's an iris. and you know what? It comes, it, isn't that, isn't it's that funny. at the core of their uh, dispute uh, yes. with Nassau? Yeah, I'll, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, I'll give the abridged version here. Um, Nassau was, uh, I, you know, I guess, was showing the Naira Internet feed. Um, or the feed on the internet. Uh, we were doing the same because we were showing our TV station, uh, and Naira kind of scolded both of us. And, uh, you know, it was nothing nefarious about it. We, and, and we looked at the contract. We thought we had approval. In the end, we decided we didn't want to get in, uh, uh, you know, a big dispute with Naira. So we pulled it. We, you know, we apologized and said, uh, you know, going forward, we'd like to try to work something out to get it up there. Uh, NASA, I think, took a harder, harder stance and, um, 
and Naira didn't appreciate it. So they have a back and forth. I don't think it's still, I don't think it's up yet. But bottom line is, in my view, um, we should be able to video stream statewide. Naira should be able to video stream statewide. Um, it gets more information out there for the betters. We, uh, and we, you know, we've tried, we're trying to change the law to allow it. I, I think Charlie would support that. I know we, I support it personally for OTB. And uh, hopefully we'll get there, you know, in, in the next year or so where Naira can video stream any r tracks they want. We can video stream Naira and, and tracks uh, statewide. Right now we have to do it, as you guys know, right in our region. Right. We can do it in our region and then out of state. Uh, it's, you know, the, the laws are so antiquated in New York, but um, some of the things are common sense. They need to be changed. And hopefully if the OTBs and Naira can come together on on some of these things, we can get them changed. Uh, again, and we'll go to the next phone call. I have a, an email from uh, someone at Jim in Schenectady who says that uh, he's encountered some problems getting to the uh, online betting site using Mozilla browser, and uh, he just wants to know if we're aware of that. You know what? Send send an e uh, I'm it, not well, aware of it. Send an email to uh, viewer mail that, that, right this here. This is it. Yeah. For I'll forward it to our uh, tech, and uh, we'll okay. get back to you, Jim, to let you know. Uh, if that if we've had other issues with that. Okay, let's go that's back the to the first, phone line. That's the yeah. first I'm hearing that. That's uh, okay. Back to the phones, and we're going to go to John in Schenectady. John, good morning. Uh, good morning. This call is for John Signer. Yep. yep. And it's uh, more or less a complaint, and I'm sure it's been uh, uh, brought up before about not having the wall charts, discontinuing those. Uh, right. Uh, you know, I uh, I think it's probably affecting the handle somewhat. I know it affects uh, how much betting I do, and a lot of other uh, friends yeah. that go in there. And uh, another issue, and after this, I'll hang up sure. uh, and listen to your response. Yeah. Uh, the self-service machines, several of them at Woodlawn. Uh, are inoperable, I'd say, out of about eight self-service machines. There's always problems with two or three of them where they're even turned off uh, okay. or turned around so you can't use them. Okay. I'll hang up and listen to your response to that. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Uh, yeah, the self-service <coughs> machines, uh, the managers are, I would tell the manager, and uh, United Totus is uh, obviously our tow company. They have to get out and uh, uh, maintain the machines to make sure they're operable. Uh, I will, you know what, I was in there the other day uh, as well, John, and uh, there was a machine that um, I was trying to get into my account, and I couldn't, uh, and part of it was the, the face of the, uh, the, the terminal. So uh, I will, we'll have United Tow over there and go through all the machines. And uh, what I would say is go to the manager, tell them, and uh, they should have, they should make a request for United Tow to come in and fix it. They're the ones in charge of the branch. If you're doing that and that's not happening, then send an email to viewer mail uh, and let me know because uh, that's their job and I, I wanna make sure they're doing it. As far as the wall charts, you know, I, uh, I agree with you, John. Uh, we had a tough decision. Um, we, uh, we haven't had much legislative help from, from uh, the state. Uh, the state back in 2003 added about a million and a half dollars in costs to our bottom line. And really what happened is we had to come up with, we had to make some tough decisions. So what, what's the cost of the, putting the cost, forms or track data? The yeah. cost of, of putting the wall charts in every branch and sending them to all the easy bets, I believe was somewhere around $600,000 a year. Um, so we made, so really what it came down to is we we're either gonna have to lay people off or we we're gonna have to uh, reduce what we send to the branches. And I appreciate what John said. I don't disagree with him, uh, but you know, we made, uh, it's an issue we looked at for years. Oh, now, we didn't do it willy nilly. We didn't do it in a month's time. Um, it's, it's an issue we've been looking at uh, we do, as, as John's aware, we do um, provide uh, the race, and we, we provide the winner circle sheets right. that I know if, uh, I think somebody was up at uh, the Bradley uh, Teletheater up in Connecticut, right. and they said they were selling profiles for a quarter or 50 yeah. cents a piece. We obviously give ours away, uh, and if you went online for the winner's choice sheet, you'd have to pay a dollar for each one. So we, we give those away free, and we do sell the daily racing information, right. daily racing form books. Right at all the branches. Uh, I don't agree, disagree with John. 
Uh, we had to make some tough decisions. If, if we're able to get some legislative changes, John, that help us, and put a little more revenue into the coffers, uh, it's something you know I, I'd probably be willing to revisit. But under the current economic times and, the, uh, and just the uh, inability of the state to really improve racing, uh, we had to make some tough decisions. Next caller. Our next caller, I believe, is Peter in Schenectady. Are we? Yep. Yes, we are. We're going to Peter. Peter, good morning. How you doing, guys? Good, good to be with you. Thank yeah. you. Listen, I, I wanted to call about what John called about, and I totally echo his uh, opinions about the Woodlawn branch and the uh, past performances. I did want to make a comment about the announcers. I like them because I'm not always watching the screen, but I'm listening, and I like to hear what they have to say. Right. But getting back to the past performances, I split my time when I'm in OTB between Woodlawn and Schenectady and 7-Eleven in Albany. 7-Eleven on, during the weekdays, Woodlawn on, on the weekends. Mm -hmm. There are no past performances at Woodlawn. There are, however, racing forums posted at 7-Eleven, and I invariably bet far more at 7-Eleven than at Woodlawn. And I can't believe that revenue hasn't been affected uh, by the past performances not being available. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with you, Peter. I mean, I, again, we had to, you know, we had to make a decision where we going to lay a lot of people off or where it, the other thing is, you know, um, I, I think we do more than any other entity in trying to provide information to our patrons. but. Uh, if you went to you know if you went to any other OTB in the state, uh, you wouldn't get you know you no, get, I, I agree, get wall charts. And, I mean, and, I've been going to OTB for yeah. thirty years, and I'm just spoiled at yeah. this point. And <laughs> right. I, I expect uh, it. And yeah. As I said, my my betting is simply not the same at Woodlawn yeah. as it is in Albany. Yeah. So well, I, I, I suspect there are lots of people like me. I I don't disagree with you, and I hope at some point. Uh, if the state can help us out, uh, then uh, we will uh, we'll revisit it. But uh, I don't disagree with you, and it was a Good tough enough. decision we had to make, and uh, it wasn't easy. And I, you know, I, I, uh, for a year, I said no, 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 and then it really came down to uh, laying people off for doing that, and I chose to do that. No, I mean I appreciate your perspective. I disagree no. with it, but yep. I, I, I welcome this opportunity to voice my opinion. It, on uh, and, and we uh, we appreciate that too. Thanks. Take yep. care, John. Uh, John, cool. can you can you? you know give uh, the listeners a rule of thumb you know if, if you spend a dollar for something your handle has to you know go up 10 times 20 yeah. times is there can you put a dollar figure on Gen yeah generally the, the it's 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 t it's 10 times so for example if we're spending 6 million 600,000 on the wall charts we need to generate you know 6 million in handle mm -hmm. to offset that and um, you know, under the current economic circumstances, I, I don't think that would have happened. And, uh, you know, it, again, it was a decision that was, uh, we looked at for a long time, uh, actually back to my, when Mike was president. Right. And uh, for the longest time, I wouldn't sign off on it. And, and then it became apparent that we were going to either have to lay people off or do that, and I chose to do that. Quick. Well, I, I oh. think that, and I'll just shut up on no, this. That's right. You know, I, I think that the, the, the fact that you're here talking about this you know, it wasn't a decision made by some ogre no. in an office. No, no, it was, no. you know, like many businesses in the current climate, no. you had to make a decision. Uh, and that doesn't mean that a couple of years from now, uh, yeah. if things improve, that, it, you know, the de decision like, could be changed. And like, I think that was Peter, right? I, right. And like Peter, I, I've been going to OTB branches for probably 25 years. So right. I, I know what he's talking about. I've been there. I've looked at the forums. Uh, so I understand, and uh, it's something that I'm keenly aware of, and, and hopefully we can revisit it at some point. Quick uh, email question. When is the restaurant going to open again at the South Street OTB in Glens Falls? Uh, hopefully, the coach? Yeah, hopefully very soon. Um, we're meeting with an individual who is interested, and um, we're hoping that that will happen in short order. Uh, I believe we may be meeting with the individual this, uh, this week. So we're hoping, you know, Maybe lo and behold, we may be able to get something open before the Saratoga meet. But it, it, it'll be open as soon as we can get it open. Uh, he has to be approved, I think, by the racing board. So there are some logistics that have to happen before it happens. But okay. we are, it's something we're pursuing. And, and you we, want done, yeah. And we want done, yes. All right. Back to the phones. And this time it's Fred in Albany. Fred, thanks for waiting. Go ahead. Thanks, guys, for taking my call. Mm -hmm. uh, John, I have one question for you. Sure. Uh, the question I have, I actually make it two questions, and uh -huh. I'll hang up after I ask them. <laughs> that, that's fine. Uh, number, number one is uh, I like to play the, the harnesses on uh, the, the Internet with the live video streaming. Sure. And uh, last night I was uh, 
playing it, and Metal Ange is on there, but you did not have Mohawk. Okay. Uh, and I'm wondering the reason for that, so that's my one question. Yeah. The second question is in, on the, the terminals in the, where you make your deposits uh, at OTV. Right. Why is it that you are not allowed to uh, make a withdrawal to get a voucher from the machine right. to bring to the cashier to cash out? I can understand under an IRS situation that right. that you uh, wouldn't be able to do that, but uh, I want to know your reasoning why you can't get a voucher uh, out of the machine. Yep, no, it's, uh, They're my two questions, and I'll let you answer them, and uh, okay. thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Two very good questions. Uh, I'll look into Mohawk. Um, Fred, but I believe if, if we're not showing it, we probably do not have approval to show it on the internet. There's some tracks that won't allow it. Uh, but I'll double check that and I'll let Nick and Tom know next week and, and they can let you guys know. And maybe the guys downstairs know, I'm not sure. Uh, the, geez, the other issue I most, uh, oh, withdrawals. We did put in, um, the procedures for, uh, for, the, for the deposits and withdrawals have to be approved by the Racing and Wagering Board. Deposits, obviously, you're putting money into your account, and there's not as much concern about somebody getting your account number and right. putting money in your account. But there is concern about somebody maybe finding your account number or looking over your shoulder, and then when you leave, punch out and pull a voucher out. So the process, the procedure that was approved by the racing board is you have to go to a teller, you have to sign it, um, you have to show your ID, you have to show, you know, I go, look, I'm the president of the corporation. If I make a withdrawal for my phone bed account or internet account, I have to show my uh, license. Uh, and that's really to protect the customer, not to be, not to inconvenience the customer, it's more to protect the customer. I, um, you know, I, I was pushing for uh, being able to do withdrawals as well. I think it would be more convenient, but I understand the other issue of trying to protect the customer because if somebody got your account number and withdrew all that money, you're going to come to us and say, "Hey, you owe us. You know, right. you owe me a thousand dollars. Somebody just stole the money from me." Well, you know, we didn't give the guy the account number. So this is a way to pr probably protect the uh, corporation and also the customer. And I think also, John, that you know, uh, the 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 ads that you had on with Gene explaining how to do it, you know, emphasized closing out yes. your account. But yep. I guarantee you. Yep. There's a certain percentage of people that leave it open. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And, and if that happens. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. If well, if you leave it, well, a crook. yeah. The only well, the the only thing that could happen is that they could make a wager on your account. So it wouldn't be some. They wouldn't right. be able to steal your money, but yeah. if well, they, they made a wager that they, won. It wouldn't be a bad thing. Though. They they <laughs> would if if you were yeah. able to make withdrawals. Right. right. Yes, that's right. Exactly. And that's that's you the point. It. You got it. And, you're 100% and so that I'm sure that's part of the thought uh -huh. process as well. Nick, you're you're 100 correct. That's a good point. John, Alex, uh, we have an email from uh, Alex in marketing. Uh, okay. They are aware of the Firefox, Safari, uh, Mac user problem, and uh, this is uh, for, for our emailers, uh, and, you, and there'll be more information. In Firefox slash Safari, go to Edit, Preferences, and click on Security. Then you uncheck the checkboxes that say, tell me if I'm visiting a suspected site, and tell me if uh, the site I'm visiting is suspected forgery, and click on Close. So in your... Uh, edit Preferences Security section, you can unclick Capital OTV as a uh, forged or suspected site and should have no problem Good. with those browsers. Uh, apologizes for temporary inconvenience. They're working uh, to correct the issue. So well, I would um, say two things. Number one, kudos yeah. for Alex for yeah. watching. <laughs> yeah. he did, he, That's right. Thanks, he, Alex. He wants to know, I'm sure he wants me to know he's watching. It's a good job, <laughs> Alex. And kudos to the email. But what I would recommend is I would put that on the internet too, Alex, where they can, you know, uh, access that. Go on the internet and yeah. see that this doesn't, you know, these uh, issues yeah, yeah. issues are there, and this is the way to uh, fix it. So yeah. um, appreciate the response, Alex. Good job. And, and I emailed Alex Nick about our issue with uh, El Blago. Let, let me just, let yeah. me just mention one more thing. At sure. the uh, we're we're in the process of putting together a Bet Mobile as well. It's a mobile branch. And wow. we're hoping to unveil that at this uh, Friday party minute, as wait, well. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait so we're going to follow wait, you up the Northway. Wait, 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 are you telling no, me? Not that a way that, no, 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 no. It's not, not the. Charles it's not the not no, no, Charles no, no, no. It's it's a smaller. It'll be it'll be a trailer type, uh, almost like a, one of those vending yeah. vendors down at the yep. Capitol. But it, you're going to be able to make you're going to be able to make bets, and it's going to be a mobile branch. And we're hoping to unveil it at the uh, Friday event. 
Uh, we do need racing wagering board approval. I hope they're watching. I hope we can get approval for uh, at least showing it. And oh, at that event, you'll be able to hopefully make wagers through this uh, through the the uh, mobile unit. This is this is what I'm seeing. Okay? We're very innovative. Wait a minute. I grew up with I grew up with the good humor man and Mister Dingling in the neighborhood. Okay. It's like dropping and, off your and, milk and, in the morning. I've got the sauce. I've got the sauce. What's that? I got. I've got the, the horse, horse right, right here. here. That's right. Yeah, you know what? That's not a bad. Uh, We'll have that one going oh, in, in, in a loop. Now, I want to tell you, if, if anything, I want to see I want to see the ad with this thing coming around the corner. Yeah, come on, and you call to the post, and people come around. I, absolutely, I think that's terrific. So yeah, I think it's a, it's pretty. You know, a, a lot of people uh, have been pushing it internally. I signed off on it. I think it's a good idea, and. Uh, it should be a lot of fun, and it, and we'll if we have a promotion at a branch, we'll also bring that along, and it also allows us to go places where we don't have branches. We can bring racing yeah. to the people. I, if the, if you got a, this is, I'm going to tell you right now, if you get a simulcast, uh, a satellite simulcast, so we can watch the video. I'll become Charles Kuralt and, and drive around. Oh yeah, the we're state. gonna no, we're gonna have uh, yeah, we're gonna I have TVs. TVs are gonna be in there as well. You can watch the oh, race and back. What a country! Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll bring what? it to the, we'll bring it to your next cookout time. <laughs> I'm loving it. This is great. Okay, let's go back to the phone line. Thank you for your patience. We're having a great time. I can't wait for this meet to start. Our next caller is Dave in Clifton Park. Dave, thanks for calling. Please go ahead. I appreciate it. Uh, first, I want to thank you for uh, having the seminar yesterday. It was very informative, and uh, I had a great time. Thanks, Dave. Good, Dave. Um, thanks. I'm a, also a heavy uh, Internet user, and I do get frustrated with today the Saratoga, they'll have Saratoga on the on the uh, on the tote board, but they won't have the list of horses. Um, you don't have Meadowlands on the tote board, but you can bet Meadowlands. Um, I'm, I was disappointed that the Mohawk races weren't shown last night, but I'm also disappointed that the Mohawk tote board um, or the tote board didn't show the Mohawk horses. I'm trying to figure out how. The tow uh, board, the, so the so you're saying the tow board did not show the list of horses. Not the not the live tow board. I have uh, the live tow boards are are very frustrating. They don't keep up. Okay. Uh, but the regular tow board would have Mohawk, but they would not have the horses listed. Uh, okay. Chester don't have the horses listed, but Pocono does. You don't even have Tioga on there. Uh, if you have Vernon, the horses aren't listed, and I'm just. I would like to know wh how, who figures out when the horses get listed, when they don't get listed, how come the Meadowlands ain't on there, or how come Tioga ain't on there. Um, okay. Yonkers uh, don't even have horses listed. I mean, so I you're, would, uh, you're saying on the, I know there's the old tow board and the new one. Are you talking about the old right. one or the new one? I, I'm talking about the old one. The, the okay. new one is just, I'm honest to God, the, the new one just does not keep up. Okay. Uh, th th to be honest, this is the first time hearing about it, um, and uh, Dave and I'll look into it. Uh, I know I've used the tote board, and you know when I click on tracks, I know they have the jockeys and, and the, the you know the names uh, the name of the horses and the odds. And uh, my understanding is all the. Uh, the the we have a vendor who updates that, um, and it's uh, track data. And uh, my understanding is that all the tracks should have a list of all the horses and all the drivers in the case of harness. Uh, so I'll look into that. This is the first I'm hearing about it. Uh, as far as Mohawk not being li uh, streamed live, I guess uh, I just heard in my earpiece, we do not have approval from Mohawk to do that. Uh, on harness tracks, you know, I, I, you know, once in a while I do respond. If you send an email to viewer mail, I, I try to look at all those. Um, and I have had situations where somebody said, oh, tonight, there's some good racing at Mohawk. It wasn't in the mix, and I would uh, and I would add it to the TV station uh, as a result of that. So if you see, you know, we're again we're not perfect. We try to do the best we can, and uh, if we miss something, and and you want to see a track, it sounds like you're a harness guy. Uh, send an email uh, to viewer mail or call the uh, the uh, TV uh, manager and. You know, make a recommendation, and if there's good racing that night, and and handle would uh, be affected, you know, increase in handle due to that, then uh, you know we try to be responsive. But I'll look into your issue on the internet. I, is the first I'm hearing about it. Quick. Uh, yeah, I mean the the thoroughbreds are usually shown, but the harness track, yeah, I mean Yonkers just is never shown. The horses' names are never shown. Okay. You know what? I'll is Yonkers. Does Yonkers run tonight, Dave? 
Uh, no, oh. they don't. Okay. Well, but Saratoga, but Saratoga's running an afternoon card, and if they're out, if the horses are on there, it would be the first time they've been on there on a Sunday. Okay. They have never been on there on a Sunday. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll check that out, and I'll let I'll let these guys know, and they can let you know next week. Uh, this is the first okay. time this is the first I'm hearing about it, and we'll we'll look into it. I, I guarantee that. Okay. And I appreciate what you guys do. Uh, the the internet wagering to me is the greatest thing. Good. So you know what I we appreciate try, that. You know what we try to do, Dave. Just make a very simple betting site. You know, we didn't go with bells and whistles and try to make it too complicated. And I think. I think the betters appreciate that. I, you know, uh, some of these sites, I swear, I go on, I don't even know how to make a bet. It's so confusing. But our site is very direct and straightforward, and I think that uh, the betters like that. So, you can answer uh, a telephone. We appreciate you can make that. a Thank bet you. on capital Thanks, OTB Internet. Yeah. No question yeah. about it. Thanks, Dave. Quick, quick Internet. All right. Thanks, Thanks, Dave. Dave. Uh, quick Internet question. Now, why, when using machines to deposit money in an account, does the ticket come out with the account holder's name on it? Uh, I don't know. I've never done that. Uh, why not just the account number? I, I'm totally unaware of um, this is an issue. I think when we did it, um, the account number doesn't come up, or maybe the last two digits or something like that of the account number okay. come up. But um, the quickest way for us to make to activate it was to do that, I believe. Um, if they were going to eliminate the name, we would have had to wait another, you know, once it gets in the hopper and they have to send it back to San Diego for testing and all this other stuff, could have been another couple months. So I think we just, you know, it's your ticket. You're making the deposit, pull it out, put it in your pocket, and you should be fine. Okay. And so, as long as it uh, if people have, have an issue with that, then you know we can look into it. But uh, we wanted to get that operational as soon as we could, and uh, and and that's the way they could do it at the time. So it's got the name, but only uh, a, a fragment of the exactly. account number. So exactly. in other words, if the guy okay. happened to lose it, right. the people would won't be, have your account no, number. Absolutely not. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's stick with the phones. John in Schenectady is next. John, good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you doing today? Great. Good. How are you Good. doing, John? I have a question uh, for John, or maybe you guys can answer it. Um, does OTB plan to do any more bet alongs like they did last year with Steve Crisp and Andy Sterling earlier this year for the Saratoga meet? Yeah, you know, uh, I don't. This isn't a planned call, is it, John? <laughs> You're, you lead me into something we're 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 doing uh, that I think is pretty exciting. Um, Capital OTB was able to get all the other OTBs to uh, come together. Wait a minute. I know. You want yeah. to say that one more time? I, I, I'm, I'm just telling kidding. you what we were able to do. Uh, as you know, John, we do, uh, we do a lot of pick six contests. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's a big carryover, 100,000 or more, we do a, we, you know, once in a while we'll do a pick six uh, contest where uh, we'll have Dick Powell right. do the ticket or Gene will do the ticket. And we only have, you know, we have a $1,000 bankroll and, you know, going... Even $1,000 isn't enough to hit the pick six. And I think we've had five out of six once or something. So what, I, what we did was we, we went to the other OTBs and said, hey, why don't we just all throw in some money and do, uh, uh, you know, and my marketing guy's going to hate that I'm uh, revealing this, but I don't really care. Um, <laughs> the, uh, we asked the OTBs to all throw in money. And what we're doing is every Saturday during the Saratoga meet, we're going to have a pick six contest encompassing all six OTB corporations. And the uh -huh. ticket is a $3,000 ticket, which I think gives you enough money to actually win. It's funny uh, because they were stuck on 1500 and I said, I basically told the other OTB, I said, OTBs, I said, well, if you're gonna do 1500 then I don't need you guys, I'll do it myself. And then they decided to put the extra money in. So we're gonna do 3000 a uh, every Saturday, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you how you can enter. We're going to have a whole, you know, we'll, 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 we'll unveil it on TV. We'll have a lot of promotions about it. But uh, you'll be able to be part of a, a big pick six ticket um, every Saturday. Now, it's not going to be, I think with Steve Chris, we basically said whoever signs up for a new account or something, right. we had, you know, 200 people sign up. And in the end, I think 60 right. uh, cashed. Uh, this one's going to be a little more limited, not because of me, but the other OTBs wanted to make it really worth the while. So if you won you'd get a big payout. Mm -hmm. so, um, so just keep looking for that. But we will have every Saturday, um, all the, it'll be the Saratoga OTB, Saratoga Pick 6 contest. And uh, I think it's pretty exciting. And, uh, and it, you know, with $3,000, I think uh, we should be able to hit it a couple times. Me, One other question. Yeah. So, um, your format for Saratoga, the morning format, uh, yeah. you, are you still going to have the New York City OTB lead off or be incorporated in that? Or, yeah. Uh, how, did, how did they get involved anyway? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> with us. I love that, John. With us. I like, I like that collective us. Um, Who are those guys? You know what? They. Uh, we have a very good relationship with uh, New York City's president, and uh, I think they do. They have a different, you know, a little different uh, spiel, if you will. But they get good guests. They. I think they get good information out there. Um, I think there's, John, I believe they're scaling back how often they're going to do it this year. I think they're going to do it just on weekends, maybe Saturdays and Sundays. So that's when they'll be on. Uh, I think they provide good information. You know, some of it's a little slapstick, and, you know, I think they should just stick to the racing. But, you know, it's Saratoga. Everybody's having a good time. And uh, No, I, I enjoy it. Yeah. I, I think it's a different approach. It breaks yeah. up the whole Right. The way our format is, and yep. you know their format and all that, so yeah. it is interesting with their guests and all that. I just wondered if they were going to continue the, down they, that line. They are continuing. I think they're going to do it on a, on a, a less of a scale this year. I think just weekends. Um, you know, they're obviously having financial issues, and I, I want to talk about that a little bit too uh, before we end. Um, but Gene, Gene will be on the show next week. We're, oh, good. This, show, this yeah. show will be live from the backstretch on Saratoga at Saratoga next week, and Gene will be on the show to give you the whole skinny yeah. on, the, yeah, on, we're gonna, on the program. Right. And I think, if so I'm not mistaken, and I hope I'm, <laughs> I'm not, but I think uh, Tom and Nick are going to have two shows, one middle week, middle of the week right. and one on Sunday. So we're trying to, uh, you know, we're trying to give our guys a little more uh, time and with New York City stepping aside. And there won't be a Ciro seminar, right. but Naira and DRF are hooking up to do a different handicapping. I think they're expanding it to 45 right. minutes, and they're going to make sure that the... the and that'll be the, aired as well. That'll be aired as well, and yeah. they're going to make sure that the uh, scratches are in before that starts. So I think, you know, I think you're going to get a lot of information, as you usually do, and uh, in my view... Nobody, you know, nobody does it better than Capital OTB during the Saratoga Yes, meeting. keep up the great job, guys. Oh, okay. great. Thank you, Tom. Uh, and and, and I like the collective we. I, yeah. I, that makes me feel good. One, one, one thing. He mentioned uh, Steve and Andy Serling. You know, Andy Serling was up here with a $1,500 yep. bankroll. We had a great crowd. We had a great time. Uh, he tapped out and yep. said, I want to come back. Good. <laughs> I want to yeah. do it again. I want, I want to do this again. And I know, I know you know that and aware yeah. of that. Yep. So uh, let's and, back we'll, to the, and we'll have them back. Let's go back to the line. Back to the phones, and now we have Frank and Gilderland. Frank, good morning. Hi, good morning, Tom. Morning. Good morning, Nick. Just a um, couple things. The first thing I was wondering is if you're going to be doing the seminar next week at the open house. Yep. And what time, and is it still at the paddock tent? Uh, yeah, we will be there. It's 2.15, uh, uh, and uh, it is at the paddock tent, uh, although it's much less a tent now than it was in the past. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll be there. We'll have some information from Jim Major, uh, some information from uh, the Clancy boys. Uh, they may even join us, uh, talk a little bit about steeplechase racing. Uh, Nick and I will spend the week uh, preparing some information. Uh, and if, uh, if perchance, the PPs are out, as we know they will be, we may pick a race and, uh, and handicap a race from the Wednesday card for folks. So we're looking forward to it. Oh, great. And the other thing I just wanted to touch on, John, I just wanted to say thank you for everything OTV does. I think you guys do a wonderful job. There's great information, whether it's during the Saratoga meet or just during the regular year. And I just wanted to say thank you to all you guys. You do a wonderful job and looking forward to the upcoming meet. And I hope you guys all have a great meet. Great. You Thanks, too. Frank. I Thanks, appreciate Frank. it. You know what? I'm, I'm gonna, I have to take Frank's lead here and just uh, talk about one other one issue quick. Um, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things that people can criticize about OTB, uh, and, and we, we accept that, and we, we're big boys, and we try to improve, and there's, but I think a lot of people, especially in the capital region, acknowledge and, and understand that there's a lot of good things that come from uh, this corporation if you're a horse racing fan. And one of the things that is happening, and, and uh, people I'm sure have read about it, is uh, the New York State Task Force on OTB. Um, and you can get information at otbfuture.com is where uh, the task force information is. And, and they've asked, I know they asked fans and they asked the industry to weigh in on what they think of OTB and, and um, you know, how to improve it and things of that nature. And while, you know, the, the critics are always out there and willing to take shots at you, the guys who actually like you are rarely are the ones who send in any comments. So. Mm -hmm. I would just say, you know, go to the site. If you think we do a good job, then I would, uh, you know, send an email to uh, through the site to them and let them know. Uh, if you think we can improve, do the same. Uh, but uh, I think our betters are the, the best educated in the state, and I think they understand that 
all the things that Capital OTB does uh, on behalf of them. I mean, the, the Saratoga Expo, you know, the, the video streaming. I mean, these are all things we push for. We get approval from the state uh, because we know you, the, the, the betters want it and deserve it. And, uh, you know, we're not perfect and we, you know, we make mistakes, but uh, we do try as hard as we can. And it's not just me. We have a whole team that, that uh, really looks at these issues. Um, and I'll give you one, one other quick item because I know we got some callers, but the OTB, and I'm trying to, we're trying to decide if the OTB task force has a predetermined agenda or not. But ironically, they mentioned in the paper, and Jerry Bossert wrote about this, that the OTBs, the six OTBs have uh, 22 presidents and vice presidents. So, the, and then Jerry Bossert took a shot at Capitol saying we have one president and four vice presidents and we have... New York City has one president and seven vice presidents. And they said, New York City does, you know, five times the handle that capital does. Why do they have? Well, I'll, g I'll give you a, a quick uh, lesson in context. Mm. When I became president, I decided not to fill my position. I was the executive pri vice president. I did not fill my position. But what I did was I looked at existing staff who I thought were very talented and worked very hard, and I elevated them to vice president, uh, basically a title, vice president of operations, vice president of legal affairs, vice president of finance, and gave them a small bump in salary. And by doing that, we saved the corporation over $100,000. Now, if you listen to the task force explain it, you would think that we're bloated and, you know, I hired four new vice presidents and, and you know, this and that. When the fact is, we elevated people who have been working here for a long time, one who was here for over 30 years, and, and save, the, save the taxpayers $100,000. That's, that's a lesson in context. Um, and, and that's why I'm hoping that the task force, you know, in my view, there are several issues that could be um, easily done that could make the OTBs, all the OTBs, much more profitable. And it's, it shouldn't take a task force uh, really to, to figure it out, but um, hopefully they'll listen to us and, and they'll... Uh, push forward the changes we need to, to make the corporation stronger so we can go forward for years to come. And, and, and I think the other side of that, John, is that OTBs have a mission to provide revenue to the county. You got it. You got it. And, and that, that, is, that mission is that, never going that, away, that, is it? Well, no. And that always gets, you know, that always gets lost. I mean, look, I'm, I'm a horse racing fan yeah. uh, first, you know, and as are all our callers. But what the other part of our business is generating money for the counties. and. You know, we provided, you know, between 4 and $5 million to our counties last year. I think Albany County gets over a $1 million. You know, Schenectady gets a lot of money. So it's an important part of our business, and it's something that we have to be, you know, keenly aware of. But I, but I think our board of directors has been very supportive of us trying to do more things to help the betters as well. And, and we don't take a backseat to any entity in the country in terms of trying to do that. We've got four callers on the line. Let's try and get to them all. We thank you for your patience. Let's go to Colony. John and Colony is next. John, thanks for waiting. Go ahead. Thanks, Nick. Uh, actually, it's Tom. But, um, okay. I have a question for John. Um, about a month ago, uh, we had a problem with Penn National, I guess, where the uh, <clears throat> machines didn't shut down on time. Right. And I had bet that race. I bet all the races in Penn National and gone home. Okay. When I came back the next day, I found out that... Uh, my ticket was a winning ticket, but it was canceled, and I was just reimbursed the money for the winning ticket. Well, when I went home and I got the rest of the tickets for the race, I came back the next day and was told they were no good because they weren't winners, and I wasn't. And I made all the bets at the same time. Why wasn't I reimbursed for all of them? That's a good question. Uh, I'm vaguely, was it just one I, race? I, when when was, did this was happen? It, was it just one race at Penn National, or was it the whole day? Just the second race. Well, and and is that the race that, that they that canceled? Yeah, they may have they may have canceled all the tickets because it was open. But I, I'll look. I'll look into. No, no, that. I'm talking about the second race. The second race, the winning ticket, they gave me my money back. Okay. The losing tickets, they told me were no good, and that race was canceled. Oh. Is it just the, the one same race? race. Is it in the same that's, race? Is, that's is, correct. Is, okay. it is it possible that you? made the bet after it should have been closed? I made the bet at the same time. Okay. So why was okay. I paid for the winning ticket okay. and not the losing ticket? I'm not, I'm not aware of that. And I, all I can say is I'll look into it. And uh, I haven't, you know, as uh, you can Dave, see by you my need, tan, You need to send an email. You want to, you need yeah, to send, send an email to viewer mail and we'll yeah, be happy to look I, at identify it. Identify yeah. yourself because uh, you check all those emails. Or is that John? Is that John? or that was John. Uh, John up the That's top. John. Yeah, just send an email if you can, John, to viewer mail. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll look into it. 
Include your phone number, and I'll have somebody call you back with uh, an explanation. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's go to Latham, uh, I think. The, the, I, oh. I would add, Ed, John, uh, my understanding is is that winning tickets made after the race should have yeah, been be closed be were the ones that were uh, yeah. refunded. Yeah, yeah that, and that makes sense. We have to cancel those, obviously. Dave and Latham is next. Dave, good morning. Uh, good morning, fellas. I just had a question. I'm exclusively uh, an internet better. Yep. Okay. And you know, you know, I, my handles maybe you know, depending on how I do in a month, might be between you know ten and twenty thousand or whatever. But I often use the feature that shows the account history, which yes. gives my activity for the month, which right. you know gives gives totals. Yes. Is there a way that you can add an enhancement to that where yeah. you can actually see Wages. the resu results by um, track, so you can track how you're performing at different tracks? You're talking about a, you're not a, a, a tool for wager analysis. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. You know what, Dave? Send, uh, send an email in if you will, uh, asking for that. Um, if there's not a way we can do that on the internet, there may be a way we can do it through customer service. That you know, you could say, "Can you run these reports for me every, you know, month?" And and we might be able to get that to you through customer service. So, because I think you must be doing it already, because you know you must be using that to figure out the rewards. rewards. Right, right. But that's just gross numbers, isn't it? No, it's by track. I would think there's, there's different right. rewards oh, for different track. tracks. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. There, there, uh, there may be a way we. I don't want to say we can do it, but if we can, uh, I think but, I think it's a it's a good feature. But I'm going to should look into yeah. it. And and I. But I think more more importantly uh, is uh, the, the notion of being able to track your wagers and where you're profitable. Yeah, it's absolutely. No, and, it, and that that is. I'm sure that's an enhancement totally that's out there. Yeah, it makes okay. sense. And, and well, if we can do it, we'll do it, Dave. Thanks for the call. Thank you. Yep. Let's go to Saratoga. Saratoga is next, and it's John. John in Saratoga. Go ahead. Uh, good morning, guys. Hey, and, uh, I just want to uh, echo Frank's compliments to you guys. I think I think this is a great station, and it's a great service to the betters. Um, I have a question, though. At Saratoga, for the account holders, are they doing that? Um, it's like a show parlay contest on the feature races where they take $10 out of your account. Oh, is that, you mean like I think Saratoga Showdown, right? Is yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? I'll have to check that. Um, I know we've done it the last few years, and I think you know a lot of the patrons liked it. So uh, let me double check. We do have. I mean, we're gonna have a whole slew of as you got, you know as you know, John, and, and a lot of our patrons know. We do a lot of promotions during Saratoga, and uh, and we'll have that. Uh, I think we have to get approval from the racing board, but once we have approval, we'll make all that. Um, uh, available to our betters so they know. But we're going to have different, you know, we're going to have Ladies' Day again at the Teletheater, as we always do on Thursdays. We're going to have, obviously, on Saturdays, we're going to have the Pick 6 contest with all the OTBs. Uh, as Nick Tamaro said, we're going to have a Pick 4 contest with him. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and I think we, you know, again, you know, not to toot our horns, but I think we do more than anybody else in terms of trying to promote racing, trying to promote Saratoga and... Uh, and uh, so I will double check that, John, and, and I'll let these guys know for next week's show. Okay. Okay. Thanks, right. John. Yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks for let's the go uh, to, comments. Let's go to New York Mills. Our final caller this morning is Stanley in New York Mills. Stanley, thanks for calling. Yeah, I'm still waiting. No, Hello? go ahead, Stanley. Stanley, you there? If you yeah, have. Well, I hope it ain't being Sunday. You're breaking up. Sunday. Stanley, you break. I hope you guys went to church. Well, anyway, here's the question I have. <laughs> Harness racing. Harness you racing. You killed my friends, Saratoga, and Yonkers. Why did you drop Vernon Dallas? Okay, thanks for the call. Thanks for the call, Stanley. Why do we drop Vernon? Um, I'll have to check. I know we're in the process of doing a promotion with, uh, a marketing promotion with Vernon where we're going to promote, the, Vernon has the Sire Stakes this year, right? Uh, the Night of Champions, mm -hmm. and they have, their, I think there's, between Tioga and Vernon Downs, there's probably 15 dates where there's qualifying races or big races that, that kind of lead into that. Uh, we're working on a promotion with Vernon um, to show those races, to promote Vernon Downs, and to uh, do, do a lot more between the entities. So. Uh, um, well, hopefully that will be resolved probably this week, and we'll have uh, more information on that. So Vernon will be a you know a bigger player on on our TV station 
uh, very soon. So Stanley, you'll be very happy about that. John, is there uh, anything that you weren't asked uh, that you wanted to say or have asked? I mean, uh, we didn't. John didn't give us a list of questions uh, that, uh, to ask of him. Yeah, so. I think uh, just a, a, a few, two more comments. Maybe we're going to have the OTBs again. The OTBs are coming together collectively to do a handicapping contest. Okay. Amongst all the OTBs, I think there's going to be a uh, a twenty dollar entry fee, so it's very reasonable to get in. Uh, the, the total prize pool is going to be between, you know, I don't want to give too much away, but between fifty and seventy-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars we expect. And uh, what's what's very exciting for Capital is that um, the final kind of uh, showdown, if, showdown you will. if you will, will be at the Albany Teletheater. Oh, great! Uh, so we'll bring everybody in from all the OTBs. They'll come into the Teletheater. And we'll have the final contest uh, day or days there. So it's. And you know, and your seventy-five thousand dollars is is a lot of money, and I think we'll be able to get a lot of entrants. And we're trying to make it so everybody can get in twenty bucks, and uh, it should be it should be a, a very good a good time. And and just building on that, we are trying to, as you can tell, the OTBs are trying to work more closely together on a lot of issues, and uh, and we're having a lot of success. There's a lot of uh, you know, a, a lot. The OTBs want to work together. And uh, I think we have a good collection of presidents who, who are willing to uh, try innovation and try to do some things we haven't done in the past to, for the benefit of the, of the betters and the patrons. And, and we hope that, you know, in the end, that's what happens. And, and we're, hope, we're hoping to build our, our obviously, our, build, our business and promote racing as well. Obviously. Okay. Um, the online handicap from Alex, the online handicapping contest, Battle of Toga, uh, is being replaced with an enhanced giant jackpot weekly accumulative format for this year. So, okay. okay? All right, so, uh, so it sounds like yeah. we do a lot of online contests, um, and uh, I think Alex is right uh, um, with the online contests. I think even if you, if you score zero where in the past yeah. you would get bounced, yeah. you remain in the contest for the next week or something. So they'll have all the details, but uh, they, you know, uh, our marketing department's put together a pretty, uh, a pretty good uh, list of promotions that I think will be very successful this year. Okay. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of this show. John, uh, no flak jacket, flak jacket no, or helmet it's too needed? Easy. These guys are, uh, you know, well, don't. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 they ask you a couple of tough yes, questions. Yes. Uh, we appreciate your candor as always. And uh, we'll see you probably another three, four months before, uh, before yeah. the Breeders' Cup or I something would just, like that. You know, I would just say uh, to the, the betters and the patrons and, and our, you know, uh, our employees work very hard to provide the best services we can at Capital, and uh, we have a very loyal, um, you know, uh, betting public uh, with Capital OTB. Uh, as I said, we're we're doing better than any other uh, entity in the state and probably in the country, uh, and I think a lot of that is due to uh, you know, as our customer service, the things we offer, uh, the internet, the video streaming, the TV station. Uh, we're always trying to improve. We're not, you know, we're not perfect. And uh, we're open to suggestions. I, I have a lot of them here that I thought were very good questions that Tom was right. They're tough questions. But uh, the things we can do, I, I guarantee we will do to improve uh, what we offer to the patrons. And if we can't do it, we'll give you an explanation as to why. Okay. If you have any questions or comments, you write us at Track Facts at P.O. Box 554. You can contact us electronically, Track Facts, T-R-K-F-A-C-T-S at nightcap.roadrunner.com. You get the next at or me at trackfacts at gmail.com. Have a great week. Uh, we'll be at the uh, backstretch at Saratoga for this. As a matter of fact, all Sunday programming will be from the backstretch. Uh, Gene Wood will be with us, uh, Shannon uh, Donovan, Mark, uh, Dan Silver from, uh, from Naira. And Naira replays are up. We're out of here. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write to the general manager at the OTV Television Network. 510 Smith Street, Schenectady, New York, 12305. This is the OTB Network.
join Saratoga's original racing partnership. Visit us online at partingglassracing.com. <laughs>